Hey, this time on Blue Squadron, I'm going to do some extreme time lapse about making some wiring harnesses to connect the LED clusters for the Superstar Destroyer. I want to connect each engine block as a group of parallel wired LEDs. I'm using parts of an Adafruit Permaproto board as kind of like a wiring backing for each of my LED wiring harnesses. Those happen to be the power rails, and I've sawed them off if he's going to hacksaw. I did this in the garage because, well, it smells kind of funny when you saw it apart, so... One, you don't want to use a Dremel, and two, you probably don't want to do it inside if it smells weird, especially where electronics are concerned. I'm soldering on triple row right angle headers. You're going to see a lot of time lapse in this video because, frankly, it's a lot of the same step repeated about two dozen times. Let's fast forward about 20 minutes, and now I'm going to solder on a single row of right angle headers. The triple rows are going to connect to the LED clusters, and the single row is going to connect to the LED controller. I ended up making about eight of these guys. The next step was to solder some surface mount LEDs to female wires that would connect to the wiring harnesses. I'm using some pretty thin gauge aluminum stranded wire with silicone housing. I always think that crimping my own DuPont headers is going to be easy and that the wires that I make are going to be more reliable than the machine made ones that you buy from China, but usually it's a time consuming process and I'm not really certain that I'm actually saving anything by doing it myself. Soldering surface mount LEDs is pretty tricky. I put them on a piece of tape to hold them in place. Then I put a small glob of solder on each of the pads. Notice the symbol in between each of the solder pads. This orientation shows you the direction of the LED. The left side is going to connect to your voltage source. The right side is going to connect to ground. Once solder has been applied to the LED, I'm going to go ahead and tin the tips of the wires. Now I can touch the two components together and apply just a little bit of heat to fuse them together. Unfortunately, I shouldn't have soldered the LED flat onto the wire. This would require me to bend that fragile wire in order to get the LED to shine in the correct direction, in other words, out the back of the Star Destroyer through the engine nozzle. I ended up having to redo this one. The second time, I soldered the wire so they were orthogonal to the LED. In other words, the wires went directly down into the LED pads. Now I can connect the LED into a gained block of female DuPont headers. These will plug into the wiring harnesses. I went ahead and tested the LED. I replaced one of the LEDs inside of my test harness with some male to male DuPont wires, and then plugged in the LED via its gang block. Once I was satisfied that this lit up, I went ahead and did the other LEDs. Since I'm doing this four times in a row, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through the next 30 or so minutes worth of work. The next step was to make female gang blocks of wires to connect the other LEDs that weren't going to be surface mounted. Once again, this is very time consuming because I'm doing it by hand rather than just getting some pre-manufactured ones and then cutting off the ends. You're looking at a time lapse of about 15 minutes worth of work. To do all wires inside of that gang of six female connectors took me approximately 30 minutes for the first set. It did get somewhat faster. The next set only took me about 10 minutes. The reason why I chose to do this myself was so that I could have uniformity in the colors so that there wouldn't be any confusion when it was time to actually connect the LEDs. I wanted the engine cluster LEDs to have a set of red and yellow wires, and the fiber optic LEDs to have a set of black and white wires. If we fast forward in time about an hour and a half, I finally get all of the individual wiring gangs done. Completely not worth it. In a situation where it's better to be safe than sorry, I decided to test each of the individual connections. I'm testing the resistance of each wire from end to end. If you've never used a multimeter before, OL stands for open line, which means nothing's connected. When you complete the circuit using the terminals of the multimeter, you should see the resistance change. What you really want to see is that the resistance drops to almost zero. It's a good thing I tested every single connection because it turns out that the last wire I tested failed. I tried shorting the connection at different points to see where the break was, but I just couldn't get it to work. The multimeter always showed open line when trying to test each end of the wire. Therefore, I had to remove that particular wire and then go ahead and re-terminate it with new DuPont headers. And now my next piece of drama for the day, my multimeter ran out of batteries. I thought I could cheap out and use my test harness to test those particular connections on the rewired uh, DuPont headers but I was really wrong about this one. The problem here is I'm still using all of those faulty DuPont wires that I had in the back of my desk. They're all the wrong gender of connector, and I'm trying to test to see if something is working without having a set of wires that I know works in the first place. 
I stole a set of batteries out of remote control to fix my multimeter, and then it turns out that the faulty wire I replaced was also faulty. This is what happens when you work while you're hangry. Anyway, after rewiring it yet again, I got a good signal out of the multimeter. This five minute episode of Blue Squadron was actually about three hours of work in real life. Stay tuned for the next episode where hopefully I'll be able to complete the circuit and get some lights going. Thanks for watching.